Hi guys, today we're going to render out volumetric fog in Mental Ray in Maya. So let's get started. Here we have a spotlight, a polygon sphere, and a polygon plane. Now, these are all very easy to set up, they're just standard defaults. If we render these, let's just do that quickly, we just get this sort of an effect. Make sure we're in the Mental Ray tab because we're rendering this for Mental Ray. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is set up our render settings. So let's just make sure that we've got a few things set. Go into rent Mental Ray. So if by default you're in the Maya software, let's go down to Mental Ray. Click across to Quality. And we're going to go into Production here. So Production will just set up a whole bunch of things throughout the scene, which will be nice for us. Uh, then we're going to come back here and we're just going to make sure that ray tracing is on to start with. That's that's all we need for now. So I'll close this window, render again. The, the quality of the render will just be slightly better. First thing that we need to do is switch on shadows. So for this light, we're going to use scroll down all the way down to the ray trace, ray trace shadow attributes. Click on ray trace shadows and re-render the scene. Now we've got a nice shadow here and a nice shadow effect. So we just want slightly soft shadows to get a little bit of a nicer effect here. So that's very easy to do. In the ray trace shadows, let's just bump this light radius up to 0.4 and see what we get. Slightly soft shadows. Now that's a bit grainy in things at the moment, but we'll fix that up in a little, in a little bit. Uh, and also on the outer edge, we're going to blur that. So let's go in now and affect our penumbra angle. Now that gives us, unfortunately our sample's not really updating here, but if we type in about three, I know from memory, that that will get us quite a nice little soft shadow on the outside. So we've got soft shadows on the outside, soft shadows on the inside. Uh, and now we're ready to really put in some fog and get testing. So the easiest way to create fog, there's a couple of ways to do it in Mental Ray, but by far the easiest is simply to create uh, a volume primitive. Now volume primitives by default sort of have a volume fog assigned to them. So let's just click create a volume cube. And you'll notice in our cube we've got box shape as a tab and then if we could click across this is actually our shader and this is called the cube fog and it's a shader that's specific only for fog and for volumes. So if we scroll down here we can see a few different settings. One of those is transparency. So let's just render this and you can see our little cube is in the middle and we've got some fog here. So let's just make this nice and large so that it encompasses our scene. Up and over. Just make sure that sort of like fits all in that box there. And we're just going to hit render again. And we've got a lovely fog that's sort of sitting up our scene. It's not really operating the way that we like. The It's not reacting to the lights at all. It's just filling our scene for now, but that's okay. So we're gonna fix that in a second. But while we're still in this cube fog, we can see that we've got this transparency and the transparency, uh, we can make it more transparent, render that out again. And we've got a more transparent fog, or we can take that the other way and we can make it very foggy. So there's a few other settings in here, including one called density and another checkbox called illuminated. So we're gonna talk about these in a second. Now, one of the first things we can do before we start uh, adding to this is we're just going to put in a noise into our into our shader. And this gives us a bit of an effect like a cloudy shader and it'll show us some other things that are going on in our scene. So let's just create that. So go into 3D textures and make sure that we create a volume noise. Now, some of these other ones I've had to play around with, some work well, some don't work so well, but volume noise is one that's not particularly buggy with this shading group. So let's click on that just got a volume noise. We're just going to leave it at its default settings. And you'll see that was created down here uh, a nice 3D texture node. So let's just have a quick look at this. So render out the scene again. And you'll notice that we get this really sort of cloudy, marbly texture in here. And it's also no longer looking like fog, which is quite weird. Now that demonstrates that we don't have our samples up high enough. So Fog, of course, is a see-through transparent object, so we need to bump up a few settings in Mental Ray in order to make this render properly. So let's do this. There's two places that we can do this. One is in the light settings. We need to bump up some settings in the light itself. And the other one is in Mental Ray. 
So first of all, let's do it in mental ray and let's hit shift five. And that will get us up our render settings window. We've make sure that we've got ray tracing on, which is by default. And let's just go in here and we make sure that we've got this volume shaders. The volume shaders is very important because that's what we're doing. Now, usually I just click auto volume or you can put the volume samples up to something like 20 to start with. And let's just re-render that again. Now you can see that Mental Ray is bringing some depth and putting depth into our fog. So this is looking a lot better and I'll just let this finish. Okay, so our scene is taking a little longer to render now, 25 seconds, but that's looking a lot more like fog. However, it's very noisy. So let's just go in here and create our, our 3D texture node and we're just gonna scale that up somewhat and re-render that. Okay, so we've got this fog happening it's all looking all right, it's not perfect. What we can do in our shader settings for our fog is go down and just minimize this density a little bit. So let's take that down to something like 0.3 or 0.4 and we'll re-render this again. Okay, so we're in the ballpark there. We can play around with this a lot more including uh, some of those settings. But what we'll do now is we're just going to make this fog now activated by our light. So by default, the fog just sort of exists by itself and it kind of ignores whatever is in the scene lighting wise and, and that's quite good because the render times are quite ch cheap here like 22 seconds but let's go in and now we want this uh, this light to actually affect the fog so if we select the, f the fog shape the, the box again and go in here and there's one important checkbox that needs to be ticked and that is the illuminated checkbox so let's go in here and we're going to tick illuminated and this will make quite a vast difference to our scene so let's hit render okay and now there you go you can see that we've rendered now our light is really affecting the scene and that's really what we're after in in this case is is this sort of an effect now our noise noisy fog we could go in and we could play around with a lot of these settings to get that looking a lot of, a lot better I've done that before but just for the purposes of this tutorial what I'm going to do is just take away some of this this volumetric noise and and what we'll do is play around with some other settings so it's really just density that we can bump that up again then you can go and tweak that noise node to get this looking a little bit more cloudy and that will work quite well the other thing that I'll just show right now very quickly is that we don't actually have to have that noise at all so let's just disconnect that altogether and we'll re-render this and you'll see that some of the this this effect that's going on we could actually bump up some of the samples on our light so what we're going to do now, now is just go into our light settings and come down here and just a couple of settings it might be a bit hard to see in the video but we just want to make sure that our shadow rays on our light are up around the five limit we could play around with those up and down have a bit of a play around with it five and five is kind of okay so let's hit render again okay we might even try uh, a higher setting to that so let's just try shadow rays and put that up to something like 20. now we're starting to get rid of some of this graininess we can keep upping those values and that will just get the quality of our light a lot better but for now i think we've sort of proved the point that's how lighting works volumetric fog works in mental ray it's a nice easy way of doing it there are other methods but that's pretty much a stock standard quick way of doing it the last thing we can do is we can just bring down this plane if you want a sort of a, a, a dry ice kind of effect of, of fog just clinging to the floor uh, we can bring this this fog plane down a bit I don't always bring it down as low as it wants because there's a little bit of fall off that happens just to the top of the fog plane but let's re-render this and just for a different effect see what we get so as we can see here the fog just sort of clings to the floor which is another nice effect and of course we can put our noise into that and give it a bit of a foggy texture as well but I hope that makes things a, a lot clearer in my nice quick overview. I didn't go into too much detail with the settings, but that will get you started well and truly on, on the road into rendering volumetric fog in Maya Mental Ray. Thanks, guys.